Yes, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you're watching from. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. The Tottenham fan base is divided yet again. And another subject, another video, another topic, another Ali Gold and Fabrizio Romano tweets, reports. So let's jump straight into it. If you are enjoying the content, make sure you go down, like it says on the screen, drop a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And big up to everyone who's been showing some support. Now, Ali Gold has put out a report via the Football London, Football London, sorry, and it says Postacoglu explains how Timo Werner can improve. Now, this actually got me thinking, before we get on to Timo Werner, when you look at the Tottenham's forwards in general, it's no secret that we've been looking to sign a striker. It's no secret that Tottenham just need new forwards, you know, and when you look at our recruitment over the last four or five years, we've signed a lot of forwards that you, like Brian Hill, Bergvine, Vinicius, Richarlison's divided opinion, Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner. We need killers in this team. And the only natural killer we've got in this team is Human Son. Now, Tottenham next season are going to be in four competitions, providing unless we have an absolute catastrophic end to the season, we will probably be in the Champions League, right? And this has got me thinking. Timo Werner is the is the name on the hot seat right now. He's the name, he's the one that everyone's talking about. Is he good enough? The fifteen million pound price tag. Does Timo Werner take Tottenham to the next level? No, he doesn't. However, twenty years of age, twenty eight years of age. Sorry, is it value for money? Fifteen million pounds. When you look at other players in the market, maybe. But Timo Werner is not a natural goal scorer in the Premier League. We've we've seen that through his time at Chelsea. He's contributed here or there at Spurs, but you can't teach, really, in my opinion, a 28-year-old all of a sudden to start striking the ball like a human son, for instance. So is Timo Werner at £15 million going to be a good signing for Tottenham? Well, it also depends what happens with Brian Hill. If Brian Hill goes, which is looking likely, he's been linked to a move away to Fiorentina. He's been linked to a move away to... A couple of teams in the Eredivisie, I believe it was, um, I believe it was Ajax, or it might have been Feyenoord that we're looking at him. And then you look at, you know, Manuel Solomon, another player. Is he good enough for Spurs? Probably not. Is he going to go in the summer? Hopefully. So if Timo Werner doesn't sign for Tottenham and Brian Hill and Manuel Solomon go, Tottenham's forwards will only be Son, Richarlison, Johnson, and Kulusevski. Now, the right-hand side is locked off because you've got Brendan Johnson and Kulusevski that are constantly competing. Even though, for me, I do think you need to sign another right-winger and you bring Kulusevski into more of a number eight role. On the left-hand side, you've got Human Son, but he's also competing for that striker position depending on the lineup we play, depending on the players we've got fit with Richarlison. And if we're in four competitions next season, we've seen how intense this style of football is. We've seen how intense... And the energy levels you need to play Angeball week in, week out. We can't just have these four. We need new new blood. We need new bodies. We need new attackers. But we also need more quality. Like, I've seen Santiago Jimenez. I've seen countless strikers will be linked to. But I actually think we need a right and a left winger brought in. Now, we're looking at the likes of Pedro Neto and Rafinha on the right. We're looking at other players who can play on the left. Strikers... Practically every striker in Europe is being linked with Tottenham. But Timo Werner, I mean, it's trending on Twitter as we're recording this video right now. The fan base, is just, it almost seems like Tottenham, only probably every four or five signings, people are like, right, yeah, he's good enough. James Madison, for example. Mickey van der Ven, for example. Pedro Porro. Timo Werner, people are like, mm, Brennan Johnson. Mm, Richarlison. We need killers. We need Killers. I've been calling this for so long now. I just want to see Marky signings in this team. You know, Ange Postacoglu's come out today and said we're only eight points behind Man City, but Man United are only eight points behind us. In order for us to close that eight-point gap, we need to sign a monstrous number six and bring in goal-scoring forwards. Like, I know it's very hypocrit hypocritical to say we need forwards considering we've scored the fourth most amount of goals in the Premier League or fifth most amount of goals, but... Every one of those teams has got multiple above us has got multiple players that up front that will score 
10 plus goals a season. Arsenal have got Martinelli, Jesus, Saka, Havertz. Liverpool have got Nunes, Jota, Diaz, Salah. Man City have got Haaland, Foden. You know, before that, they had Sterling. You know, before that, they had Mares. You know, it, 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 and Leroy Sane before that. We need to just bring in more goals from wide positions. I don't necessarily think Timo Werner is going to get much better. He's 28 years of age. I don't care how good of a coach you are. Like, is Timo Werner the guy to to, to come into Tottenham next season? Like, he's, got, he's played nine games in the league and scored two goals. Like, yes, you could say the minutes aren't, he, he hasn't started nine games. He's come off the bench here or there. You know, and yes, he was very good against Luton, but he's never, unless he was, when, unless you're looking at his Leipzig form, he's never really been prolific. Like 23 goals in 89 games at Chelsea, 14 goals uh, in 103 at Stuttgart. You know, Tottenham, two goals in 10 games in all comps. Like none of the, none of the players that we that we're actually looking at in terms of wide players are prolific, but I think the players we are looking at offer more than than Timo Werner does. It's not even being harsh. I just think it, people don't realise how big of a job we've got in the summer to get rid of five or six of these players and, and to bring in new forwards. Like, it's insane. Quick sip of the tea there. Let's get through this report. Uh, Postacoglu explained that the system he builds within his sides, that he negates... They need for panic or scrambling to react, even those final minutes, final minutes when matches. Actually, let's just bring it up on the screen just so people can read it. Um, it's an interesting topic. Can Timo Werner improve much more? I don't care how good Ange is or how good we think Ange is. A player's only got a certain ceiling. You know, I think it's something that uh, that can be constant throughout my coaching career. If you go right back to the very start, all of my teams had that trademark of being able to run around results of winning games late. Um, he goes on to say, part of that actual game is, um, part of that actual game uh, is the model itself. As simple as it sounds, when you are so committed to playing a certain way, to score almost, it becomes irrelevant. It's actually true. How many late goals have Tottenham scored this season? It's actually insane. Like 80, if you look at the 85th minute plus, I think Tottenham have got like more goals, I think, than anyone else in the league from the 85th minute plus. And this is where he goes on to talk about Timo Werner. He says, um, one player who's been quickly brought into the glue system um, has been more important in recent lakes is Timo Werner. The German was involved in both Spurs goals against Luton, forcing an own goal of his movement uh, for the first and uh, racing down the left before getting a ball into Brennan Johnson, who put it into Song to score the winner. Postacoglu believes he can continue to improve the 27-year-old. I believe he's 28, actually. Uh, on loan from RB Leipzig with an option to buy this summer for around £15 million. We probably play a little bit different to what he's used to. He's always played uh, centrally at Leipzig earlier in his career. Yeah, but he also played um, on the left as well. Um, he's played in those wide areas, said the Australian. There are some more uh, distinct things to do with wire players, but also him getting used to the intensity of the way we train and which we play. Probably from a more physical perspective, that's been the biggest adjustment. Like all other things who sign, it takes him a little while from the guys that come in uh, to the start of preseason. For someone like Brennan Johnson, it takes him a little while to get into the physical standpoint where they're training and it feels like they're getting stronger um, and it transfers to games in a small window. Like what I'm just saying is it's not it's not going to be done overnight. But let me ask you all something. Does Timo Werner look like the guy that's going to score 10, 15, 16 goals next season in the league? For me, like, no. I like Timo Werner, but if we're signing Timo Werner for 15 million, I think we need to go and sign one or two more players on top of that. And when you look at Tottenham's wide forwards, Four competitions next season. Son will get double digits. Richarlison probably will get du double digits. Brennan Johnson and Kulazewski, question marks about if, they, if their returns will be up there. Obviously, for goals and assists combined, they will, but I'm talking about just in goals in general. You're then scratching your head. When you look at teams around us, Arsenal, Liverpool City, for instance, well, Salah, Nunes, and probably Diaz and Jota will get double digits, as well as Saka, Martinelli, Jesus and Havers. So providing they're obviously fully fit for every single game. 
it's an interesting one to kind of see where our, you know, how aggressive we're going to be next season. Um, the Spurs Express have put out another quote as well. Uh, and and Ange Postecoglou has basically said our strength and our ability is to be really aggressive in our press. Like, if we're playing four games next season, like, it's going to be interesting to see what our forward line is going to be. Like, you know, the defence, you've got the likes of Ashley Phillips coming back. into the t into, He'll probably get minutes. Radu Dragusin, Romero, you know, Mickey van der Ven. We've got very good depth in centre-back. We need that number six to solidify and protect that defence. And then we need goals out wide. And probably number eight. You're probably looking at four or five signings in the summer. Two wingers, a DM, a number eight, and a defender. And I'd be happy with that window. But they've got to be players of quality. Have to be players of quality. Like, you look at Tottenham's season in general. Right now, it's like... Right now, it's been very much up and down, up and down, up and down. And Angie's right. He wants to build something in the next kind of 12 months to make us challenge the teams above. But in order to do that, we need to just bring in quality. It's as simple as that. I'll be interested to hear what your thoughts are on Timo Werner. Does he improve? Tottenham that much for me probably not I'm not going to lie to you guys I think he'd, he'd be a good good squad player but nothing more than that let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already and I will see you all in the next one tomorrow West Ham versus Spurs the big ones we'll be back for that see you all soon I am